So we've had this microwave for about 15 years. It finally died, so it was time to replace it. Now, we really like the Whirlpool brand. This thing has been fantastic for us, so we decided to get another one that's Whirlpool. But the biggest difference, well, there's two differences. This one looks better. The second thing is that this one is a low-profile microwave. This one's going to give us more room underneath, so it's going to make the area underneath appear larger. And it'll give us more room for actually using our range. Okay, so this is nice. This much larger microwave, the back plate was like kind of thin on the bottom and then just went up on the sides. This is actually a much bigger back plate. So I don't even know if we're gonna even need the template. Like this is the template by itself. So we got our hardware. So pretty nice that they included everything. They actually got the toggle bolts included and they also have lag screws depending on what your situation is. All right, so there's the tray and the instructions. And in that foam was the plates. So these are the cover plates for that vent. So here's the microwave. I'm gonna start with the instructions and we'll see what we have to do to actually get this thing installed. So they actually did something pretty cool, which is this is in fact the entire template. So you can use this for marking the top of the cabinet and you can use this for hanging. So this is a really cool idea. Now, whenever you're doing this, there's three holes that you need to cut in your cabinet. There's the one for the power cord and then there's the ones for the mounting holes. So that's where the bolts are gonna hold it to the cabinet. This hole right here is gonna be for the power cord. So this is where the power cord fits through the cabinet. And then these two holes in the ends and these tabs, that's gonna be where we actually drill for the mounting holes. So you can see those kind of line up with these mounting holes. So we're gonna take this, press that underneath the cabinet and we can mark out those three holes. Now in my particular cabinet, you can see we already had this hole drilled out for the previous microwave. Now, the weird thing about it was the old microwave actually had the cord plugged in right here. But because there's this cavity, they were able to just put the microwave up, run the cord across inside the cavity, and then poke it up through that hole so it would be perfectly in line with the outlet above. Now, not all cabinets are going to be like that. Some of these are going to be perfectly flush like a shelf. Some of them might not be deep enough. It really depends on your scenario. But normally, you would put this right up there, mark out this hole for that power cord, and then you would drill that out with something like a one and a half inch hole saw. And the size isn't really important as long as this fits through it. So for me, I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use that center hole for the outlet, but the mounting holes that actually screw into the microwave from the top, those are in the wrong spots. So I'm gonna have to cut those. So we just gotta try to get it centered. And the way that they suggest is that you mark the center line in the cabinet, and then you match that up with these two centering arrows. But I can kind of see just on the edges if we're centered or not. So I'm gonna mark these. Now things to be aware of when you're lining this up is if you have a backsplash on the wall, so the microwave is going to be a little bit further away from the drywall, you might have to pull this out a little bit. And if the front of the cabinet has a lip on the front, so this is a little bit lower than the back, then the entire microwave has to go down to meet that lip. So now we're going to drill. We're going to drill with a 3 8 inch drill. At this point, it's a good idea to cover up your range underneath. That way anything that falls isn't going to be falling into your range. And there's two good ways to drill these holes. The first way is that you drill with a smaller drill and you drill up, and then you drill with a larger drill and you drill down. Now the reason that can be important is because as you're drilling up, eventually that wood is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and weaker and weaker until eventually you're just going to push the wood up and it's going to break out above. Now that's not going to look good for me. It's not going to be that important because this one is above my head. But if you have very nice cabinets, then that's something you want to keep aware of. The other way that you can handle that is you can put something on top of it. Just another piece of wood and then apply pressure down on that. You can even clamp it if you want to. And that way when you finish drilling through the cabinet, you're gonna be drilling into this scrap wood. So if anything happens to that, it doesn't matter. Just make sure if you're gonna be holding this, that you are holding it in the place where you're not gonna be drilling because you don't wanna drill into your hand. And the one on the right there is a new hole. So you can see it looks pretty good. So now I can bend these tabs back down and it says they're not gonna fit flush. Don't worry about it. And now this is our back plate. And I really like that. Like, this is a great design. Every microwave company should do this. This is a good idea. Now, if we were venting out the roof, then we would have used this to mark that out. So you just mark that out and cut it out. And that's, I mean, it's always four inches by 12 inches. So just figure that. And then you figure another quarter inch to a three eighths inch from the wall. And if we were venting out the back, then you would cut that out right there. I'm just gonna be recirculating. So that's not really a big deal for me. Now in this particular cabinet, you can kind of see the gap right there in the back. And then the gap over here is a little bit smaller. But if you look in the front, that gap and that gap is about the same. So what that means is that if we were to look at the back of the wall and we were to try to center it on that, it wouldn't be quite centered. The most important thing is this edge right here. So I wanna center it on this board and that board. So when I'm actually putting the plate on the back, it's gonna be off to the right just a little bit. Because my cabinet is flat, I'm just gonna press this all the way up against it. 
Now my scanner says that I have a big 2x4 right there, a 4x4 or something. So either they put a 2x4 facing the wall right here, or, uh, or there's just a big 4x4 right there. I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. So I got that there, I've got a 2x4 there, and I've got another big one right there. Now I'm going to use these holes as my reference because that's where they hung their last microwave. There. So I'm going to try this one first, and if that works, great. If not, then I'll try that one. Now when you're hanging this, you need to hit at least one stud. You have to use that because that, you, know, you can't just use drywall to hold up the microwave. So you got to find your stud, and then drill into it, and then attach it with this lag screw. Now I've got two studs, so I'm going to use two lag screws, but if you only had one stud, you could just use this toggle bolt, and you got two of them, so you'd use the one stud, two toggle bolts. You would drill a 5 8 hole in the drywall, put this on the mounting bracket, spin this on the back, and then just snap that through the drywall. That'll pull on the other side, and when you screw it down, it will hold on to the drywall. But you do still need to have at least one lag screw into a stud. So this says to use a 3 16 drill. All right, that definitely hit wood. And that also definitely hit wood. So I'm good to go there. Now at this point, it would be a good idea to patch these two holes and paint all of this before you actually put the microwave or anything up. Now I'm gonna be patching the holes for now, but I'm gonna be painting it later. For this, I'm just using DAP dry decks. This is like a go-to stuff for me. And I just kind of get a little bit of the putty and mash it into my old holes. You can use a spatula to do this. I've seen people do that. But the thing for me is when I see that, it flattens it over and it makes it very obvious that it was patched to me. So this orange peel texture, if I just mash it in with my finger and then kind of wipe off the excess, and then when that dries, you can barely even tell it was there. I might do a real light sanding on it, but then paint it over and you won't even be able to tell it was there. For this, I'm using a 7 16 socket. All right, so I don't have that tight. I do have a little bit of wiggle with this. And this is gonna be the perfect time to actually check for level and make sure that it is the way that we want it. I've been fairly reliant so far on the cabinet being level, which could actually be a bad idea. You should probably check it for level before I do this. But I've been pretty happy with the way that things have been level in this house so far. So right there looks pretty good. So I'm going to lock that down. Now, if at all possible, we do want these to be very close to the hooks because if it's too far in, the hooks could actually bend down. If you're going to be using those toggle anchors, then you want to have those as far out as possible. But you can kind of see now that gap in the back over here on the right and the gap over here on the left, how this is much wider. That's why it's so important to make sure that we're lining up with the front of the cabinet and not the back. All right, so to prepare, we need to make sure that we have the right bolts. So these are the ones for the anchors. These are the ones that we're going to be actually putting into the microwave. So you can see they got a slightly wider head. We're also going to attach these washers that came with it. We'll make sure we got these ready to go. We're going to set those up here. We're also going to set up our screwdriver and our drill. So there's these two hooks right here. So the microwave is going to sit on top of those hooks. And then I'm going to push it up. And I'm going to put those screws in from the top. The instructions say to do this with at least two people. So keep that in mind. I'm starting them by hand and then threading them in because we don't want to cross thread those. So now I tighten these up and sometimes they'll put blocking uh, between the microwave and the cabinet, especially when we have that cavity there and we don't pull it up too high. The microwave I pulled out didn't have that. I'm not going to be putting it in this one. It's really up to you if you want to do that. You can make it tighter. Well, you don't need it to be that tight. If you're really worried about it, you can use uh, 
thread locker, something like that, so the bolt doesn't come out, but it's really not necessary. Just don't overdo it, and you'll be fine. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we can plug it in. That's cute. If you want to, you can push the cord down into that cavity. Just make a little more room up there. There we go. Wow, that thing is nice looking. So one thing I really like about this model is that it doesn't have buttons on the doors. And that's important to me because I love the look of these long ones like this that don't have the, you know, the big panel on the right. But the problem with those is that the buttons on the doors means the electronics has to go around the door somehow. And that's where the failure point is on all these. So this one, we still have the buttons on the sides, but it has that nice clean look that I, you know, everybody likes. There we go. That's, I mean, surprisingly big for as small as this microwave is. Yeah, I like that a lot. Did you press the little open button? There's an, oh, there's an open button? <laughs> okay, that's pretty cute. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, see, there is a lot of space in there. Yeah, there's, there's actually a ton of space in here. And one of the things I really like about these Whirlpool microwaves, and like, my girlfriend went to go look at a bunch of the other ones, and what she was saying was that a lot of the microwaves just feel cheap. Like, they feel like they're going to break. And these Whirlpool microwaves, I mean, they just make them good. I mean, let's compare that. So we're looking at about almost seven inches up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If we compare that to our old one, yeah, that's about the same. It's like two inches taller, that's about it. That's crazy. Yeah, the amount of space that you got in the microwave didn't really change that much. And especially, I mean, I'm not putting tall things in there. I'm putting like bowls of food. So I'm not losing anything, but I'm gaining a ton of space here. I mean, you gotta think the other microwave came down to here. So it was covering up, like I'm kind of tall. so. I couldn't even see the back wall from here. This really opens up the whole thing, plus I still got my microwave. So yeah, I like that a lot. That thing pushes some air. Cool. So those two patches, those are gonna turn white eventually. When they do, uh, when they're dry, we'll just paint all this up and then we'll be done. nice and quiet.